Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about parasites. What are they? How do we get them? How do we treat them? And how do we prevent them? Okay, so on the board behind me, we have a list of different parasites. But basically, a parasite is anything that is living in our body that is detrimental and has no benefit to us. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the list. We're looking at roundworm, hookworm, pinworm, giardia, tapeworm, enthermoeba, lice, bedbugs, Lyme disease, H. pylori infections, right? All these infections that can create a detrimental effect on our body with no benefit, right? How do we get these types of parasites, right? Before I even talk about that is people don't realize there's so many people who actually have infections, right? As high as probably... Uh, 60, 70, 80% of the population will have some sort of parasitic infection and they, really, they don't realize they have one. So how do we get them? Water, right? Usually this is more of um, uh, countries that are of poor sanitation, poor water supply, etc. Uncooked meats, pork, even fish, so forth, you can get parasitic infections. Oral fecal route, basically runoff water that you drink, or that's in your food um, that has fecal matter in it, right, from animals. Pets. People don't realize that pets can transmit parasites, anything from roundworms to H. pylori infections. So oftentimes these, uh, let's say dogs, uh, are brought up in these kennels with other dogs, and maybe the conditions are not quite sanitary. And oftentimes they will pick up things like roundworm. And that's why they test um, new puppies, right? They do a stool pathology test to make sure they don't have any parasites. So pets are a big transmitter of parasites. Right? If you let your dog run around and they sniff everything, lick everything, and then you are saying, oh, the saliva is really clean. Let, let them lick your face, your mouth, your eyes, etc. right? Parasites can be transmitted by pets. Polluted waterways, lakes, overgrowth, etc. Feet. I've had actually one patient who got a parasitic infection through the feet, through the skin, right? They were on some beach on a remote island um, and there were parasitic um, bugs in the sand and it transmitted a parasite through the skin where she, it would open up cold sores, uh, uh, sores in their legs, and so forth. So, it can be a transmission through the skin and insects, right? Obviously, you know a lot of different viruses and, and things like Lyme uh, disease, uh, which can be transmitted by insects or bugs, right? So these are all different things that can happen um, in terms of modes of trans, uh, transmission. When we look at our symptoms, right, there are so many symptoms related to parasitic infections. And oftentimes what happens is you go to your physician and you complain about a symptom, you end up with a the medication. They don't put one and one together and say, huh, this could be a parasitic infection sometimes. So look at the symptoms, right? So the obvious one is things like acute vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, right? Or it can be a change in your bowel movements, a sudden change. All of a sudden you're constipated. All of a sudden you're, you have loose stool and diarrhea, right? Unexplained fatigue or malaise, constantly tired, no matter what you do. Got 10 hours of sleep, I'm still tired, right? Sleep disturbances, you toss and turn, right? You might wake up at 2 in the morning and 3 in the morning, can't go back to bed. Now, that can be a symptom of blood sugar, but it can also be a result of a parasitic infection. Itchy skin or rectum. Pinworms are, are notorious for itchiness around the rectum, right? Especially with kids. So they'll get a pinworm, uh, the pinworms tend to come out at night, uh, in the middle of the night they start to scratch and the rectal uh, itchiness can be related to pinworms. Uh, unexplained itchy skin is very common with parasitic infections. Unexplained health conditions, things like fibromyalgia, pain, I don't know why I have pain, right? Fibromyalgia can be inflammatory, it can be as a result of an infection causing inflammatory response, causing pain. 
people who grind their teeth at night, right? Like they never used to grind, but all of a sudden they're grinding their teeth. Sugar cravings or even uncontrolled appetite or food cravings. Constantly hungry, right? Parasites are feeding off of you, making you um, calorie deficient, basically. So you start to crave sugar. You start to crave food all the time, right? I'm hungry all the time. Another one is anxiety and depression, psychiatric disorders, right? Things like Lyme and other infections that can create inflammatory responses affecting the brain. So anxiety and depression is one. This is another one, autoimmune disease. Now I have many videos about autoimmune disease, autoimmune thyroid, etc. So I want you to go ahead and, and, and watch those videos. But essentially autoimmune disease can be triggered by a parasite. Why? Because parasites create an inflammatory response, a cytokine storm. It creates an environment where the body's immune response is uh, robust. And sometimes it can trigger an autoimmune disease where your immune system starts to attack your thyroid. Or it can start to attack your joints like rheumatoid arthritis, right? So there are many conditions that can be autoimmune conditions that can be related to a, maybe a parasitic infection. Anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is notoriously common in parasitic infections. Things like H. pylori. But, you know, worms, larger worms, tapeworms, etc can create issues with iron absorption and iron depletion, right? Because they are using your iron, right, to fuel their body. So iron deficiency anemia can uh, certainly occur, which causes what? Fatigue. So these are all things that we look at when we look at parasites, right? So when we look at it, we have all these symptoms. So how do we test for it? Right. We can test it in a variety of different ways. You can do an endoscopy, a colonoscopy. You can do a, a swallow of a camera that can look at your, your colon, etc. Right? And this is not going to be the best test because oftentimes these uh, microbes are small or these eggs are very small of these parasites. So therefore, um, the colonoscopy, endoscopies, and these cameras um, are not the best way. But sometimes it will pick those up. The best test for us is stool testing, right? We have a company called GI Map. Um, it's called Diagnostic Solutions. And they provide a DNA analysis of your stool, looking at all the different parasites, looking at all the different uh, microbes in your body, looking for blood, looking for uh, inflammatory processes. So a GI Map would be a good test or a good starting point. You can do another test called GI Effects through Genova Labs. They have a three-day test where you can look at the three-day collections uh, of stool so you don't miss anything. So these are different tests you can do. You can also do a blood test to see if you have an immune response or an antibody to a certain parasite. So blood testing is also a viable way to check for these. In terms of dietary changes, low carb, low sugar, no milk or dairy, no gluten. Right? Basically, parasites like uh, sugar, right? So you want to kind of starve that out. So you want to minimize the sugar intake. Gluten and dairies aren't all inflammatory anyway, so we want to eliminate those. So dietary changes. And then eating things that are high in things like garlic, ginger, and those types of things can also be an anti-parasitic um, way of doing things. Remedies. So in our office, what we like to do, or what I like to do in our office, is when we have a confirmed case of a parasite, we want to do two weeks of a GI support and bile salts or gallbladder support. So many times when patients have a GI parasite, it's already doing damage to the gut. and They can't tolerate the antiparasitic herbs and so forth. So I like to do two weeks of support for the GI tract along with the gallbladder, followed by a anti-parasitic regimen, right? So a GI support can be things like glutamine, aloe vera, extract, right? Uh, a probiotic and maybe digestive enzymes, right? Prepping, and then a gallbladder support, because you want to make sure that gallbladder is functioning well and is dumping the toxins uh, when you have a kill-off of the bacteria or the parasite. 
So we want to do two week support followed by antiparasitics, which can be woodworm, black walnut, garlic, clove, oil of oregano. So these, these would be my top five, right? Oil of oregano, there's a company called Biotics Research that makes a great um, emulsified organ, uh, organ, oregano oil, uh, which is time released, so it gets down lower into the GI tract. Uh, this is a fantastic way of doing it. And then you obviously berberine, olive leaf extract, and there's a lot of antimicrobial type of supplements out there. What I suggest is most patients who do this is to take a combination pack, not just wormwood or black walnut, but a combination of things to really go after a parasitic infection. And the time frame is really a minimum of four to six weeks. I prefer six to eight weeks uh, in terms of trying to kill off a parasitic infection. So how do we know it's gonna work? You can retest down the line. Maybe you do a regimen of six to eight weeks, wait three weeks, and then retest. Or you look for symptomatology relief, right? All those symptoms of anxiety, itchy skin, etc. right? So what I'm going to do is I'll link, link some of the supplements below, uh, different companies, etc. And you can go ahead and do a search on those. But it's important to make sure to prevent that from coming back. We talked about you know the sanitary issues with pets and, and water supply and etc. Right? In other countries, um, parasitic uh, cleanses are done probably once a year. They use, often use medications. Right? It's a very common thing in Asia and, and some other uh, third world countries is to do a parasite cleanse because uh, they know uh, between uh, raw foods and um, water supply etc that parasites are inevitable. So you want to go ahead and make sure you do those things to help yourself. So if you have unexplained symptoms, right, and instead of ending up with an anti-anxiety medication, uh, something for your diarrhea, something for itchy skin, dermatological cortisone creams, etc., think parasites. Sometimes that is the underlying mechanism, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, we're at Clinical Excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.